Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pat Magley. Yet again, we're Heroes Camp talking about the necessity, the commandment, and the commission to fast and pray. Um, one thing I know for sure that victories are not won in public, but they're won in private. They're experienced in public, and they are celebrated in public, but they're only won in private. And usually you're there with just very few people if you're not in there by yourself, with you and the Lord with prayer. And that is a, a place that doesn't take skill um, once you get in there. Uh, it may take skill to get there because you're going to have to chop some things off your life uh, to be able to make the type of quality decision to give quality time. You can make a quality decision and still not give quality time, which to me is really not a quality decision to go into your prayer closet and to close the door and pray. And that man uh, that is in there will be rewarded. He's done in secret will be rewarded openly. That which you have heard in private uh, shout from the housetops. Um, one thing the Lord was showing me that we need a rage and love in tandem. I hate what's happening to our children. I hate what's going on in our nation. And if I have rage, but it's not mixed with the tension and tandem of love. I believe Jesus was very disturbed at times on his life. Personally, he had peace, but his mission caused him to see other things because he came to bring redemption. And he saw how far man had fallen uh, he saw it from heaven and he saw it close in person on the earth. Rage keeps the tension on love and love never fails. That's why the two of them can work because love of Christ never fails. And you're not at rage at people. That's not our, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but rage as an emotion to keep love alive, to keep motivating yourself to go again, go again. Go again. Sometimes you got to go seven times just before you see the cloud of size of a man's hand. Rage without love is insincere. It is an insincere posture. Love without rage isn't love. Because that don't even sound Christian, but I'm not trying to sound Christian. It just seems like it's a, it's a developed to me the revelation that God was giving me. Uh, I don't miss prayer. I don't, I, I'm not bragging, on, but there's something I know that I've got to get accomplished on behalf of another generation. And God lets me feel things very deeply and it hurts. Uh, it makes me angry and frustrated oh, only at the enemy. And I'm no, I know I'm no match for him without prayer and without holiness. Uh, rage and love together equal empathy. Empathetic people, empathetic people will give their life for a cause. They'll give their life for a cause. Rage is when you can't take it anymore the way it is, and you're inclined to do something about it. You'll fast, you'll pray, uh, you'll set yourself aside to enter into a place uh, with humility and with, um, that if, if, it, if it's ever going to get done, we know that we cannot combat these things with natural law or natural physics or natural a government. We need the spiritual government from God. Love never fails. Fasting and prayer give access to realms that give power to fight these demons that cause rage uh, because of oppression and injustice. So there is a rage that is caused by these things that are hurting people that they are not getting. They're getting taxation without representation in government. They're getting all different kinds of things um, uh, in church. They have a People make them promises, but they are not being fulfilled because they're not followed through and teaching people how to get their needs met through prayer. You cannot have social justice without spiritual awareness, without spiritual application, and without spiritual warfare. I would like to go over to uh, the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20. And the necessity of, it's not my rage. It is the upset, the God is upset. God has cried. God has been angry. God has been frustrated. You know what I mean? Especially with America. 
and he doesn't like the way things are going. And so he'll send people into the earth realm and uh, to give warning. And warnings are for to take heed. But people who do not take heed of warning usually don't last long. Um, in, we'll start in verse 19 in, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 19. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live is in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. And will go the whole way and, uh -oh, and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For it is the righteousness could be gained through the law. Christ died for nothing. So it's important. It's no longer I that live that Christ died. So it's not, I'm not trying to be a better person. I want to be a new person. I don't want, I can't be a better person because uh, by the law, the more I try to be good, I'll be able to fail, fail the law. But by grace, I can keep growing and, and growing in death. The type of death that births life. No longer I, I die daily. No longer I live, but Christ. Um, before we take on the new a person, we got to put off the old person. And that's one of the purposes of fasting and prayer. That God will give you revelation about yourself. Like, oh boy, I'll tell you, I see what you're saying, Lord. Mm -hmm. Over in Colossians, in chapter number 3, and in verse number 9. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of the its creator. Here there's no Greek or Jew or circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly love, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I'll say one thing. Unless you put off, you're not going to put those things on because our old person does not, is not equipped for that. We're not, our natural person is not, we want, we're selfish. I know I was, I know I was, and I ask God to help me every day now. I need help. Over in Ephesians in chapter number four, And verse number 22. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. I don't think it could be any clearer, but we can jump over that onto putting on our new self. We don't want to die daily, and we put our new self on on top of our old self, and our old self eventually comes through the new garment, and, it, and it's moth and it's no good. We got to die daily. We got to get to this place. We have missed that. All you got to do is go down front, shake the preacher's hand, and give him a hug, and refute a few things, and you say, well, you know, I'm not saying it is, but I'm definitely saying probably ain't. You know what I mean? Uh, because you go back out and do the same things. You didn't put off the old person. When you have an encounter with Christ, immediately you're going to be afraid of yourself. That I don't want to go back to where I came from. I know that's what happened. The way it happened for me. To put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in its attitude of your minds, and to put on your new self, created to be like Christ in true righteousness and holiness. Uh, over in First Peter, in chapter two. And in verse number one, therefore, rid yourselves of all malice. If we're ever going to have the rage and the love together and the tandem, we got to get where the rage is pure. We got to get to where we want the will of God so much that it burns on the inside of us. Sometimes I can approach that. Most time, I'm like, God, help me get there. Therefore, rid yourselves 
of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander, every kind, like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk, so that'll be it. Mm -hmm. But now after a while, you know, you know, Peter goes on to say, you know, at a time that you should be craving meat, you're still on milk. You know what I mean? So we must grow up. And the fight has gotten more intense, and we must take the fight to the enemy's gates, because the gates of hell will not prevail uh, against the kingdom of God. We got to have some people that are athletic in their mindset, that that that, that Paul talked about, the military, that once you are enter into the military, you're no longer involved with civilian affairs. We got to have some type of thing that come on the inside of us, you know, that is, um, mm, it's just otherworldly, I don't know. Um, Lucifer is the god of this world, and he's envious of us because he could not get back to his former estate, and hell and eternal separation await him, so he is trying to trick us to think like him. Anything goes as long as you don't hurt anyone. Anybody, what their sexuality is, what their dope habit is, what they what what they, what they feel about race, as long as they don't hurt nobody, you know what I mean? It's, Daddy, I'm telling you, you'll go straight to hell just like that. As long as you don't hurt anyone, but pride goes before a fall. Over in First John, in chapter one. And chapter and verse number six and seven. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But see, prayer takes a check up from the neck up, and prayer always investigates the heart. Between those two things, your heart and your mind, you know, they're they're very much uh need to be in tandem about the footsteps of a righteous man or ordered of the Lord. Are you taking those footsteps out with your mind thinking about? How are you walking? How are you thinking? How are you being? Let your heart, is it talking to you? If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, purifies us from all sin. Over in Galatians in chapter number six. And in verse number 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision mean anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. It is so important that we uh, evaluate ourselves as we go out for prayer and that we look at things objectively by the Holy Ghost and, and things that Mm, will not be in alignment with the things that are on TV, that we need to understand what, how God feels about things and we'll understand it through prayer and it'll be revealed uh, in his word to us and the pleasure or the displeasure, the things that make him grief, grief or, or things that bring him joy. Fasting is visiting and potentially inhabiting another realm and a dimension that give more clarity and power on how this dimension how this dimension works it is a higher reality when we go into fasting and prayer we elevate ourselves we go to the mountain we see from a different perspective mm -hmm. and one thing the lord was sharing with me um tuesday morning before i even came to prayer that the highest purpose of technology uh, will be at the second coming of Jesus Christ, that every eye will see him. And the Bible says over in, Ephes uh, uh, in Revelation in chapter number one. And in verse 
number seven. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the people of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who and who is to come. The Almighty. Everybody's talking about the goat. That's the goat right there. Who is, who, who was, who, who is and who will come. He's in all of those different time frames. And then he came from outside of time into them time frames, conquered all those time frames. And lives in eternity. And he presents us this salvation that if anybody would come to him and believe and, and, and turn from their wicked ways, that they would have that. So I believe that the highest purpose of technology is that everybody will see Christ come back on their phone. And then the Lord showed me and I began to weep. Suffer the little children to come. And they're all on their phone. I know they're on their phone for Disney. They're on their phone for a lot of different rings. Some of them are pure flicks or whatever. But I'm telling you, this is a serious hour that we're alive and mankind has lost his mind and given his mind and his heart totally over to demonic activity. Uh, the law of habit is something that is very necessary for prayer. And not just going through the motions habits, but over in Joshua and in chapter number one. The law of habit. And verse number seven and eight, we'll start at verse six. Be strong and courageous because you will lead the people to inherit the land. I swore to your forefathers to give them. It's important that we're built up on the inside. So when we have to make swift, accurate, and, 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 uh, the type of decisions that will offend some, but get of the body of Christ to where it's bringing glory to God. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate in on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in this. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. That's three times that he said that in, in four verses. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's so important that we lean over on the everlasting arm of God. That we um, operate uh, with accuracy the uh, things that we're commissioned to do concerning fasting and prayer. Taking care of the foreigners. The law of habit is a very valuable equation to develop in your life. You sow a thought, and then you reap a habit. Then you sow a habit, and then you reap your character. Then you sow the character, and then you reap a destiny. Over in 1 Corinthians, in chapter 15, and verse 31, it says, I die every day. I mean that, brothers. As surely as I... Glory over you in Christ our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus for merely human reasons, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. You got to watch in your habits. The people that are trying to not necessarily purposely uh, misdirect you, but they may have not they may have not had the conversion that you have had and so then they have got to go they got to go um and if you keep mentioning to uh, Christ to them uh they'll 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 make you go and that that's even okay that's how you know the law of habit builds the bridge for faith to come across to get you and to elevate you to your dreams and vision Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by proximity. Proximity works by drawing close to God and your understanding will begin to wake up. When you draw close to God, then you can hear God's voice. 
you begin to see God's hand, you begin to understand things. And when they understand, that's when you can get the vision to come to pass. People got vision, but they have no understanding. A strong faith makes a strong will. A weak faith makes a weak will. Without fasting and prayer, we will miss God's choices communication for our lives. Fasting and prayer will give a different type. It'll be God's choices communication for our lives. Over in Romans in uh, uh, 8, 13, talking about putting off the old man and putting on the new man, especially through fasting and prayer. It's much easier to keep the old man down and crucified through fasting and prayer. Your awareness is greater. Your sensitivity is greater. Your, your, your desires become a flame. Um, Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of your body, you will live because those who are led by the Spirit will be called the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and we are able to cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. I don't know how much clearer that that can be right there. Over in Romans 7, 4, it says, So, my brothers, you have also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who raised him from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to him. Die daily. Die daily. That, that is the kosher way to go with God. Uh, in my last scripture, let me look over to Revelation and in chapter 2 and in verse number 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes, I give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To put on the new man has much more reward than the sacrifice of dying daily. It has so much more Dying daily, uh, all you lose is hell, death, and the grave. All you lose is hell, death, and the grave. But when you die daily, the rewards are, 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 are beyond uh, comprehension. They're beyond articulation. They're beyond uh, vocabulary. They're, 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 and you don't have to wait to die to get them. All you got to do is die daily, and they'll begin to happen to you. The freedom, the joy, the peace the understanding, the temperance. You can have rage and love at the same time and have temperance against people that come against you. Anyway, my challenge for you today is be where you ought to be when you ought to be there. Be all up in there doing what you ought to be doing and wake up again and do it tomorrow and call the breakthrough. This is Pat Magley saying what the Word of God says. Put off your old self and put on your new self. In Jesus' name, I challenge you today. Thank you for hearing me. The Lord bless you.